In this tutorial, I'll show you how to make each of these simple telegraphs. First, create your material. Open this up. Then change your blend mode to translucent and your shading model to unlit. Untick cast ray trace shadows because we don't need it casting shadows. And then right click and type in radial gradient exponential. From this, drag out and type one minus. And from one minus, drag out and type if. To the left, right click and type dynamic parameter. In the details panel, change the first parameter to fill percentage and set the default value to 0.5. Then hold S and left click for a scalar parameter and copy and paste that to get two of them. Rename this first one to empty space opacity and the second one to filled space opacity. That's the empty space opacity to 0.4 and the filled space opacity to 0.8. Then drag out from fill percentage and plug it into B. Drag out from empty space opacity and plug it into A is greater than B and A is equal to B. And drag out from filled space opacity and plug it into A is less than B. Next, right click and type in particle color. And then drag out from that and type multiply. And plug the if into your multiply and then plug the multiply into emissive color. In the preview, we can see it's had an effect. And if we click this plane icon, then we can actually see what our telegraph will look like. The next step is to make it circular rather than a square. So copy radiant gradual exponential and paste it down here. And then hold one and left click to create two scalars. Plug the first one into radius and the second one into density. Set this one to 0.5 and this one to 100. And then drag out from if, make another multiply node and drag the radial gradient exponential and plug it into there. And then drag out from multiply, create another multiply node and plug it into the alpha of your particle color and then plug it into opacity. And this gives us our basic ability telegraph material. If you want to see what each node is doing, you can right click any one of them and click start previewing node to see exactly what effect it's having. Now this gives us a circular telegraph, but we also want a square telegraph within the same material. To do that, right click and type in linear gradient and then drag out from one minus X and type in switch parameter and call this is circle area. Plug linear gradient into false and plug is circle area into if. Now what this does is it will switch between these two inputs based on whether this value is true or false. If it's true, it will use the radiant gradial exponential. If it's false, it will use the linear gradient exponential. Next, copy this and paste it down here. Plug radial gradient exponential into true and then hold one, left click to create another scalar, plug that into false and set this to one and then plug the switch parameter into multiply. Now, whenever this switch is false, it will give us a square telegraph. And whenever it's true, it gives us a circular telegraph. Make sure to save and then go back to your content browser, right click this new material and create a material instance. Name the first one, mi underscore ability telegraph circle, and then right click, duplicate and call this next one same, but with square instead. Open up the square telegraph and here, make sure to tick is circle area and make it false to give us our square telegraph effect. Within these material instances, you can tick these boxes in order to edit them. So you can change the opacity of the unfilled area as well as the opacity of the filled area. For now, we're just gonna keep these as default. So I'm gonna untick both of those and leave them as they are. Now we can create our particle. So right click, go to FX and click Niagara emitter. Select create an empty emitter and click finish. I've called my emitter FX Telegraph Base because we'll be using this for multiple particles. Open this up, click the plus arrow next to emitter update and type in state. Change the life cycle mode to self, change the loop behavior to once. Then click the plus arrow again and get spawn burst instantaneous, which will spawn one particle. Then go to render and click the plus and click sprite renderer. Go to the material and change it to your material instance. Make sure to use the material instance and not your base material. Right now, the sprite is always facing the camera and we want to make it so that it's always facing upwards. To do this, we'll change the alignment to custom alignment and we'll change the facing mode to custom facing vector. Then click the plus arrow next to particle spawn and type in initialize particle. Click the plus arrow again and find set new or existing parameter directly. Within here, we're going to click the arrow at the top and type in alignment, get the sprite alignment, click it again and find the sprite facing. We're gonna leave sprite alignment as it is, but we're gonna change sprite facing to 001. Now your sprite will always face directly upwards. Within initialize particle, all we're going to do right now is set the sprite size mode to uniform, and I'll set the default to 1000. 
Then in particle update, click the plus and find particle state. For now, we'll just leave this as it is. Then click the plus and find dynamic material parameters. And within here, you'll find your fill percentage. We can change this to 0.5 to make the telegraph half full. We want the telegraph to fill over its lifetime. So we're going to click this arrow here and type in normalized age to find the particle normalized age. This makes the telegraph fill over its lifetime. Just like how one material can create multiple material instances, one emitter can create multiple particle systems. Go to your content browser, right click your emitter and create Niagara system. I've called mine telegraph circle. Open this up. Within this new system, we can now start adding some user exposed parameters. So first, click the plus icon and add a linear color and call it color. I'm going to set mine to a nice red color and you can copy the values here. Then click the plus and add a float, call this lifetime. Click the plus again and add another float and call this scale. I'm going to set lifetime to one and the scale to a thousand. Within initialized particle, we can then use these user exposed parameters to set these variables. I'm going to click this arrow here and find my lifetime. Click the arrow next to color and find color and click the arrow next to sprite size and find our scale parameter. Now, whenever you change these parameters, it will directly affect the system. This is our basic circle telegraph, but now we want to create the square one. To do that, go to your content browser, right click your system and duplicate. Open this up within your square telegraph system, go to sprite renderer and change the material to your square material instance. If you want to change the scale of your square telegraph, we'll need a few more parameters in order to do that. So click the plus, add a new float and call it length. Click the plus again, add a float and call it width. By default, I'm going to set this to 1500 and this to 500. Within initialized particle, set the sprite size mode from uniform to non-uniform. Click the plus next to sprite size and type in make vector 2D. Set X to your new length variable and Y to your new width variable. Right now, if you change the length of your telegraph, it will scale from the center, which might be what you want, but it's not what I want. To make it scale from the edge rather than the center, I'm going to go to position offset and tick this. And then I'm going to click this arrow and split to make a vector. On Y, I'm going to click the arrow and type multiply float. Set the first one to 0.5 and set the second one to your user length parameter. Now, whenever I change the length, it will scale not from the center, but from the edge here. If you don't want your telegraph to fill over time like this, you can go to the dynamic material parameters and change this from the normalized age to zero to make it completely empty. You can also change it to one to make it completely full. To create the circular outline telegraph, we'll have to make a new material. Open this up, set the blend mode to translucent and the shading model to unlit and untick cast ray tray shadows. Then right click and add particle color. Right click and add a radial gradient exponential and then copy and paste that so we have two of them. Then right click and add a dynamic parameter. Call the first one, outline thickness. The second one, outline density. Third one, inner region opacity. And the fourth one, emissive. For the default values, we'll go with 0 0.02, 0 0.2, 0 0.05, and 1. Hold 1 and left click to add a scalar. Set this to 0.5. Drag out from here and add a subtract node. Drag out from outline thickness, plug it into the bottom half of the subtract node, and plug this into radius. Hold 1 and left click, set this to 1000, and drag this into density on both of these nodes, and then drag 0.5 into radius on this one. Drag out from here and add a multiply node. Drag out from inner region opacity and do one minus, and then plug that into the multiply node. Copy and paste the multiply node and plug it into the second radial gradient exponential, and then drag out from outline opacity and plug that in there. To help organize things, you can double click these lines to add these reroute nodes, and then drag them into place. Drag out from multiply and add a one minus node. Drag out from one minus and add a multiply node. Plug this multiply into this multiply, and plug this into opacity. Then drag out from your particle color, add a multiply node, drag out from emissive all the way over here and plug that into this multiply, and then plug this multiply into emissive color. Then if you click plane preview, you'll see that you have a circular outline telegraph effect. To create a new particle from this material, all you need to do is go to this telegraph circle particle, right click it, duplicate it, open it up, and then change the material from this old telegraph effect to your new circular outline effect. Once you've done that, you'll need to go to dynamic material parameters, which is now changed. Click this to reset this back to just a regular float, and then set your default values to 0 0.02, 0 0.2, 0 0.05, and 1. 
If you want to change the color or make it more emissive, then you can edit this emissive value here and change the color down here. If you want your circular outline or any of these telegraph effects to last infinitely, then all you need to do is go to particle state, untick this, and then tick this. Then go to emitter states and change loop duration mode from fixed to infinite, and it allows you to destroy the particle manually whenever you need to. In order to add one of these telegraphs to a blueprint, all you need to do is go to the add button up here, type in Niagara to add a Niagara particle system, and then over on the right, we can select our particle system. I'm going to choose the telegraph circle effect. Make sure to untick auto activate so it doesn't activate on its own. And then we want it to be as close to the floor as possible without sinking into it. So I'm going to set mine to minus 89, which is just barely above the bottom of this capsule. Then go to your event graph. To demonstrate this effect, all I'm going to do is trigger the particle whenever I press a button on the keyboard. So I'm going to right click, type in keyboard H to get the H key. And then I'm going to find the Niagara particle system, drag out to get a reference, and then drag out from this and type activate, and then plug this into here, compile, click play, and now whenever I press H, it triggers my particle effect. If you want to be able to trigger the effect rapidly, you can tick the reset boolean here, and now if I spam H, it will continuously trigger the effect on top of itself. Be very careful doing this, because this effect is transparent, and if you overlap multiple transparent layers on top of each other, it will really have a huge impact on performance. Now that works well if we have a telegraph that only goes out to that radius, but what if we want to adjust the area of the telegraph at runtime? In order to do this, drag out from the Niagara particle system and search for float parameter. If we give it the name of one of our user exposed parameters that we've added, like scale, and then set this to 2000 rather than 1000, move this off to the side, plug this in before you activate the particle, compile, click play, and now whenever I activate the particle, it'll be twice as big. We can also do the same with the color parameter we set, as well as the other parameters like lifetime. If I set this to 0.2, then the effect will trigger much, much faster. If you want to switch over to your square telegraph effect, then I'm going to unplug these, plug this directly into activate, and then go over to my Niagara particle system and find the square telegraph effect right here. However, when I activate it, the effect is always in one place and it's always behind me. This is also a problem with the circular telegraph because it doesn't follow me as I move. If you want the effects to follow you as you move around, all you have to do is open up your emitter, and in the details panel at the top, just click local space. Make sure to save, and now my emitter will follow me as I move around. So now my square telegraph follows me, but it's rotated the wrong way. So all I'm going to do is go back to the viewport, rotate it by 90 degrees, and now it will always be in front of me. Last but not least, let's say I want to have a telegraph effect that's constant rather than a sudden burst. I can press H to activate this outline effect, but how do I disable it? All you need to do is drag out from here, type flip to get a flip flop, and then drag out from Niagara and type deactivate, and then plug activate into B. Now, whenever I press H, it will activate it, and when I press it again, it will deactivate it. One issue I'm having is that the effect won't go away immediately if I quickly press H twice. It will always last at least one second regardless of what I do. This is because the lifetime within the particle is set to one and after one second, it will automatically destroy itself. If we want this particle to last a much shorter amount of time, we can just change this to something really small, like 0.01. Now, when I spam H, I can toggle it on and off with ease. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, please ask them in the comments, and if there's any tutorials you want me to make, please let me know.